Hey everybody, Bryguy here again with some more DCS World. Today I'm going to do a quick instant action mission on the MiG-21 BIS, and we're going to see if we can't land through all this cloud cover and uh, get down on into Nalchik. So we have uh, our RSBN approach, and we'll contact via ATC, and uh, yeah. So I just did this a couple minutes ago, and I went back to look at the uh, file and realized that I wasn't in fact recording it's the disc i was doing the uh, the other dx story option for live output for streaming and i felt really dumb so let's see if i can't get it uh as good as i did last time i did really well and i put it down really gently so we'll see if i can't try and replicate that so we've got now check rsbn channel 8 and channel 14 on the radio so let's have at it dial in our trim here first of all I'm going to turn off the uh, gun sight. I like flying with the fixed net on. Um, 14 on the radio. Oh, 14 and 8 RSBN and PRMG landing. Nice. Okay, so let's turn off that volume. Let's uh, turn off our RWR. We don't need that. And. Um, Let's see. You know what? I'll give this a little bit of volume. So we are 47 kilometers away from our landing at Nalchik. And uh, I'm still a bit confused as to how to read the navigation on. Uh, the KPP for navigation mode, not the uh, the compass, but the uh, the in-flight flight director kind of deal. So I think it means that I'm left of the beacon for approach. Once we get in within um, 20-ish kilometers, then we can start going through the clouds be interesting. But uh, for right now, you know, I'm going to line up my uh, KPP, something that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to line it up with... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's uh, call into Nalchik. That seems like a good idea. Nalchik, Nalchik. inbound. Come on, Nalchik. Wake up. We need you. You are on channel 14, right? Yeah, come on. Radio. ATC. Nalchik. Inbound. Nalchik. Stu Piatri. You are surrounded. Wake up, Nalchik. I think they're uh, asleep at the wheel. I'm gonna try and line my KPP up, or my course needle up with the uh, heading that the runway theoretically is, which is like 24 ish. Roughly 240. Take off recovery mode. We are 28 kilometers away. Scratch that 29. Um, I'll just keep slowly descending through this cloud cover here not a whole lot to do. Um, I'm going to put this into not descent mode, landing mode. There we go. And once we get a couple kilometers closer, the uh, PRMG will pick up the signal and should set us right in. This is a hefty bit of cloud cover that we have to punch through. I like this periscope, it's very silly looking, but it's helpful. You can actually see through it too. Oh, we've picked up the uh, PRMG signal. We are a bit low on the glide slope. Yes, 
ascending comes down. Okay, so we are a bit low for the glide slope, so I'm just going to try and fly the glide slope as best I can. Still getting used to the uh, instrumentation here. It is quite wacky and Russian after all. It seems we are well right of the runway, so let's keep on with the uh, vertical glide slope here. Seems that we had it the right way after all, so we're going to come back right to try and center the needle, get our glide slope information back. Come on, plane. There we go, so we're a little above, and we're well left. So we'll descend and uh, continue our right hand course. And now we get to turn hard, too hard, too hard, and uh, turn back in on the glide slope. Suck in the throttle a little bit, I'm actually going to just sort of let the nose fall so we can get our descent rate at a good speed. We are pretty darn slow. I could even, at this stage, pop our uh, intermediate flaps, which I will do. dial in a little nose down trim to compensate for that. I think the proper glide slip is like 3 meters per second, so we're a little high, so we're just kind of diving down to catch it. Oh man, I'm just turning. Turning way too hard. And I don't even mean to. This is literally the worst approach in the history of aviation. It's probably because I can't see the ground, but I should not be blaming poor piloting on poor visibility. I should know how to do this. Alright, so there we have the runway in sight. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my flaps all the way, dial in a little bit of trim, and then drop the gear. So that's a lot of extra drag. But uh, I want to be able to just start getting all that drag out of the way early so I can get my settings all dialed in. And what did I just click? I don't even know. Something on the pressure. Oh gosh. Okay. So we'll just leave it be. We'll leave it be. We'll pretend it didn't happen. We know where the runway is. It's there. And keep flying the instrumentation. I want to stay... I mean, there's like the landing setting on the throttle, but I find that you always want to be a little bit faster than what that gives you. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm flying the glide slope poorly, or what, but uh, I always have a bit of trouble maintaining that speed. Oh. There's the uh, outer marker beacon. We are well high. So I'm in fact going to pop the air brake and push the nose down here. Try and get right on this glide slope. Okay, this is within reason. Looking much better. We are lined up. More or less, there's a little bit of crosswind I'm noticing. A little high on the glide slope. There's the inner beacon. We are right on, right on the money. A little bit left of center, but you know what? That's okay. It's a wide runway. Alright, and we'll flare. And hey! I'm happy with that. Our landing gear is intact. I'm very happy with that. Alright, let's go ahead and raise our flaps and 
pop this good old drag chute. I love this drag chute. It's so silly. Boy, is it good at slowing the plane down. Oh, yeah, as we slow down, I can really feel this crosswind. It's just sort of pushing the plane left. Go ahead and step on the brakes here and release the drag chute. Sweet! Get rid of the radio menu, and thank you. That will do it for this episode of DCS World. There will be more in the future. Uh, there are quite a number of episodes coming down the pipeline um, as things sort of drop into existence. Uh, the new Sukhoi 27 flight model will have to be played around with and uh, will certainly be uploaded very shortly uh, once it's out of the open beta and they iron out all the little kinks that they found, which should be just within this next week. And uh, there's actually a bunch of fixes for the MiG as well, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, one of which is, I believe, reduced? They just said in the patch notes, drastically altered, but my assumption is reduced the uh, fuel consumption on Afterburner, which was, I guess, too high? But, I don't know. I'm not a MiG pilot, I don't expect to know these things, but... I'm very happy that it's a little more fuel efficient now, so... Wow, that is some crappy weather we flew through, isn't it? What is that plane? Can't quite tell. And it's after burning. I'm guessing it's a MiG. It looks smoky. Must be the 29. But, uh... Yeah, so that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, folks.